Hello and welcome to this episode of Keep It Positive, sweetie guys. I am so excited about this episode. I have none other than my boss, the biggest boss, <laughs> <laughs> multi hyphen. You are an author, you are a writer, a director, a philanthropist, a father, everything. Tyler Perry, my hey. God. Hey. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> you like, doing? I literally feel like this is my first time doing this. I was so nervous. I could, like, that's so crazy because we talk all the time. All the time. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. Sure. I just wanted to make you proud and do this right. I'm already proud. <laughs> I'm already proud of the other episodes. I'm proud of the title. You got to tell me how that came oh, about. Okay. Yeah. Keep yeah, it positive, keep, sweetie. Yeah, 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 keep it positive. How'd that come about? It came about because um, I had a young lady. I actually had posted a young woman's work who helped me organize my closet. Mm. And this woman got on. She was like, "You um, all this bragging and boasting, you need to go buy some land or a house. Mm. I said, I, I had time. Mm -hmm. Normally I ignore, block, yeah, delete. Yeah. Oh, we got time today. So my little fingers got the turtin, and I was like, I said, what you should look is I'm supporting another woman's business, mm. and not looking at it from a negative standpoint. I just put hashtag keep it positive, sweetie. Oh, okay. And okay. it grew legs. My fans were like, it just like literally keep, went crazy. Denora, we were trying to come up with a title for the podcast, and she's like, every time I think of you, I just think of abundance. Mm. And in that moment, I was like, in the back of my head, I said, what if it's not always like this? Mm. Yeah, abundant. Well, like, what if my life isn't? It was crazy. Mm -hmm. like, I just got chills thinking about it. And um, what if your life wasn't always? Isn't always like this. Isn't what if always because abundant. She's like, every time I think of you, I think of abundance. Mm -hmm. And a part of me was like, but what if it's not always like this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you know where that came from. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. We can get into that. We can yeah. definitely get into that. Yeah. Yes. But that that is clearly just that unfeathered. Uh, fear from childhood of something that somebody said to you or something mm -hmm. that somebody uh, planted in you that immediately make you think this isn't going to last always. Yes. And that is a horrible, horrible sinking feeling. And mm -hmm. it's also a lie. Mm -hmm. But it, but it can serve you well. Yeah. Because it can motivate you to keep going and work even harder. Yes. So that's what I used it for when yep. I used to hear it. I don't hear it no more. I don't hear it no more. <laughs> I bet you don't. I'm, I don't hear it no more. I think I'm all right now. You, are, right. you yeah. are all yeah. right, honey. You are all right. So yeah. um, we were brainstorming and I was like, you know, I want to do a little segment on the show called Keep It Positive, Sweetie. Mm. And they were like, that's the name of the show. The name of the show. And that's how it came up with it. That's great. Yeah. I don't like addressing haters, but that's good. I'm mm. glad something great came out it of did, it. Because yeah. people, you know, in social media in this world, they're sitting around, nothing to do. And 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 what, what you have to understand about people who post negative things like that, mm -hmm. their algorithms in social media, if you t click on something negative, you're only going to get fed negativity. So the negativity mm -hmm. is showing up in their lives with in other things. Wow. And if you keep letting that stuff in, everything negative, everything negative, everything gossip, everything this, mm -hmm. that your life is going to become that. So yeah. I'm very much about keeping it positive, sweetie. <laughs> and stay and staying uh and staying clear of all of that foolishness. Yeah. yeah. You do yeah. a really good job of that. I, I try to. Mm -hmm. I try to. I don't I don't let it in. I'll stop if somebody starts talking about somebody in front of me, a gossip, mm -hmm. like, mm -mm, mm -mm. we don't do that here. You cut it off quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut I love that quick. about yeah. you. Yeah. That's why when I know they're talking about me, you're not gonna let them talk about me. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, Same. No, I, I no, fight somebody no. over you now. No, no, no. If somebody like, tell me somebody's in in trouble. <laughs> you will. Yes. If somebody's in tr and and if you're telling me something because there's a, some a situation that we need to help. Yes, that's, that's different. different yeah. But not just to be. No, no. If you ain't got no solutions to what people are going through, uh, no offering trying to help. Don't mm -hmm. don't bring that to me. Nope. No. That's real. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. I want to do a little story time. We're gonna go back. Yes. To please. when we when it first started. Yes. When I first started working at Tyler Perry Studios as a PA. Um, the first thing they told me, do not look at him in the eyes. Don't speak to him when you see him. <laughs> don't do that. I was like, okay. And I don't, you know, I don't even know what year was this? Because 2012. Know, I don't know. Going who, into 13, we started having have not. Who was starting all this shit? It's crazy. This, I mean, can I say shit on keep it Yeah, fine? absolutely. Okay. <laughs> who was starting all this shit? Because I hear rumors too, but that, oh, oh, don't look, don't talk to, don't. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm like, what are y'all, where does this come from? I don't know. And somebody told you that. Yes. That mm -hmm. was like a part of like my getting the ropes, learning the ropes, like, so if you ever see him, like, don't get on the elevator. And it reminded me of Capitol Hill. When I worked on the Hill, it was like, if you see a senator on the elevator, do not go on. If they're on the train going to the Capitol, wait. And I had an Obama incident where I 
was running trying to get some papers mm. to the floor of the Senate. And he was on the train and I was like try, trying to get on there real quick. And I saw him and I ran back. He said, come on. And I was mm. like, you sure? He's like, yeah, come on. And I was like, thank you. Out of breath. I was like, Lord, but it reminded me of that where it's certain rules. I was like, maybe that's just a thing. So one morning we were walking. They, everybody points out, okay, that's where his office is. This is where catering is. I'm like, okay. And maybe a few weeks in, we were walking past each other on the sidewalk. You were coming, going to set and I was going to get some coffee probably for someone at that point in time. And um, I just said, just speak. Mm -hmm. That's what how mm -hmm. you were raised. You don't walk past right. people. You acknowledge people when you see them. So I just said, good morning. And you spoke back and I was like, it was like a movie. Like if somebody had a, like a, a camera, it would have been so funny to see my reaction. I'm like, he spoke back. And I was like, it was complete opposite of what everybody said. I know it. And, and that's why I wanted, like in the beginning, I was like, I, that's why I force people to say hi now because mm -hmm. I'll see him walking up. I'm like, hey, yeah. how you doing? <laughs> you all works. right? Because I'm like, I don't, if somebody's still telling y'all that, that's not so. Because I, not I check in. I want to know how people are doing. And I'll, do. I'll stop in the hallway and talk mm -hmm. and see, you know, how's your mom? How are things you going? You will, yeah. yeah. Complete opposite of what I was told. And I just, I love that it was the complete opposite. I'm but. just thinking Capitol Hill to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Go, ahead. go I, 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 ahead. I it's not lost on me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. And then I worked my way up mm -hmm. and a lot of people are always like, how did you and Tyler become so close? How did you even start working for him? Mm. How that even happen? And do you remember when we were doing Soul Cycle at Greenbrier? Yeah, was, yes. And I yes. came up to you and said, we need more money for the costumers. Yes. And I was so scared because we hadn't really, it's, it was always just, good morning, sir. Yep. Keep it moving. Yep. And something was like, just tell him because he has no idea. Yep. And you, I'm talking about within hours, accounting was up in that department, figuring out how we can get more money to get more people in to help us because the way we shoot, we needed that, some yeah. good, good help. And you were like, literally, you were like, we'll make it happen. Yeah, because like, because the, here's a, the thing that people forget. It, I can't see everything. Mm -hmm. I can't be everywhere. Can't. So it takes somebody bold enough to say, hey, mm -hmm. you you working, we're all working side by side. Mm -hmm. We're working really, really fast. We need the help. Yeah. And not everybody would do that. And there'll be people in departments who are suffering, who are shorthanded because accounting saying no, or this other person saying no, nobody's told me. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So I was, I was, I was glad you said it. Yeah, you yeah. made me feel very comfortable. I was like, yeah. okay. And I don't, you, sometimes you're like, Chris, why you didn't say nothing? I'm like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I got just yeah, sat yeah. back. But that was the thing where I was like, I need to talk to him. But I was so scared. And that was just another instance where you literally was like, so cool. Like if people look at you because you're 6'6", six, six, you're like this giant. It's like, oh gosh, like how do I even approach this man? Laggy like yeah. approach everybody right. like, hey. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. But um, that was just another testament to like how you just make things happen. And yeah. you're like very when open. I'm, when and... people make me aware of it, yeah, because mm -hmm. it's really important to me working that hard. That's why so many people love working at the studio because mm -hmm. it's a, we move. We do. But we are still t together. I'm, I'm right there with them side by side in the trenches. So it makes it all just we see everybody pushing in the same direction. Yeah. That's why we've been able to do what we do. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. it starts with you, because I remember um, even as a PA, just coming on the set sometimes, and we're all exhausted. Mm -hmm. Everybody's working these hours, and you're right there with us from sun up mm -hmm. to sundown. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's like, this man ain't got to do this. No, no. <laughs> At no, all. Nope. You can literally be on your island or in one of your properties. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. Nope. nope, I don't have to be here. <laughs> literally. Yeah, but and I love it. It was inspiring, though, because yeah. it made me go harder. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, if I see this man who's already made it and doesn't have have to do this work this hard I really got to go hard mm. and it just inspired me and and you did I did oh. started working for me and this other <laughs> crystal running behind me with my shoes <laughs> Going on GMA, we hear some of these schedules. If you, we, we should show them some of the schedules we that we used to have to do. It was, it was insane it when was. I'm promoting a movie or something. And there yeah. you are, we're up, up at going to bed at three, up at, up at five thirty, getting things ready. And it was, yeah, it, and you got big feet too, so the yeah, shoes was heavy. But, but you know, the thing, <laughs> the thing about it though, that really moved me is just how much you honored the job and what you were supposed to do. Yeah. That to me spoke volumes because anybody who comes in and just, you know that their passion is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know you had another dream. No, you didn't. I had no idea you had another dream. Tell them about the audition. Uh, <laughs> I had auditioned for um, a role on If Loving You Is Wrong and then also for Erica on Have and Have Nights. Actually, um, Dar it was Darcy on If Loving You Is Wrong and um, Erica who played, um, she was one of the young ladies on Have and Have Nots. I auditioned for those. Didn't get any of them. You are working with me every day, holding <laughs> every day. my clothes, went through the proper channels to audition, mm -hmm. 
And didn't get the role. No. And when you asked me to style you, because that was when I was just like yeah. working in costumes. Yeah. Tyler, I would literally, we would be in Greenbrier. My agent would send me an audition. I would run upstairs, find something in the back, back. Remember we used to have that big warehouse mm -hmm. behind the costume department upstairs? Mm -hmm. I would find something that fit that character, change into it, run downstairs, tape it, run and get lunch, run upstairs, change back, go back to work. Literally try, like grinding, trying to figure it out. Even auditioning for stuff for you. And once you asked me to be your stylist, I was like, this man don't think I can act. <laughs> and I had no idea. You had no idea. I had idea. no idea. None. I thought that was your way, a way of saying, you can't do this, but I got something But come hold my shoes. Yeah, hold my shoes. <laughs> come come hold my roll shoes. with me. Let me show you the world. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but I, didn't, I, I had no idea because nobody ever told me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why nobody told me that yeah. you were auditioning. Yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy, yeah. Until sisters, when you, again, because this should speak to anybody watching, mm -hmm. about having the boldness to speak up. Like the boldness that caused, started us talking was you saying we needed help. Mm -hmm. The boldness of you actually getting the role of Fatima started with you saying, um, I really would like to try to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, first time. Yeah. I'm hearing it. I'm thinking... Mm -hmm. And I, you remember what I told you? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's gonna, I'm not gonna give you anything. It's mm -hmm. gonna be small, and what yep. you do with it is. Yep. If I give it to you, you, better kill it. You better kill it. And I was like, I will not let you down. And the first day, I remember you shooting in a blue dress on Sisters, and I remember all of was it blue or black? But well, all I remember yeah. is all of the crew coming for wardrobe, so just to support you. Yes, it was so beautiful. Yeah, but that's <clears> that tells the world the kind of person you are. That mm. all your think, think how many of your damn coworkers gonna go to support you or something. All your right. coworkers came down, they and when did. you finished that scene, they were all applauding, yelling. We all yep. they jumped on. It was I have actually have footage that's still on my phone. Oh, you should put that in. Yeah, cut it in. You ready, Crystal? Yeah. Let's this is my on. costume designer who wants to be an actress and she just got casted for her first role at that Tyler Perry good. Studios yes. with Dreams Come True. That's right. And action. Miss Barnes, Mr. Melvin would like to see you and he said to bring your things. Yeah, Crystal! Yeah, Crystal! <laughs> <laughs> But what's beautiful about it is I sat in the corner going, hmm. Mm. Oh no, no, no. That's something else. Mm -hmm. That's not just talent. That's not just acting. That's not that's something else. That's something that is anointed, wow. that is special, that is called for that particular purpose. Mm. And I'm always looking for that. So when I saw it, I was like, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Same way with Cassie and LeVan. We were on mm -hmm. tour and uh I'm in the Medea costume, getting <laughs> ready to go <laughs> on stage and I and uh I looked at them sitting over in the corner. I said, I'm gonna do a sitcom with you two. Wow. We're gonna do House of Pain. I gotta go, hello, walk out on stage. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we did House of Pain, wow. and, you know, all and those episodes. All these years later, yeah. it's still going. Yeah, hope, yeah. I hope my show does that. I, I totally, 100% <laughs> believe it will. And whatever it is, is if it doesn't, you're going to be in abundance. Hey, won't he do it? Won't he will. Yeah, won't he Say, will. Won't he will. will. Hey. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And even when I called you that day, um, I had I was still styling you to ask you about, just to let you know this is what I wanted to do, um, just to speak to who you are as a friend. You were backstage getting ready to go on to do your farewell tour. Mm -hmm. I thought you had the day off because it was so many days that the calendar was really small. So I was like, okay, he off today. So I called you thinking you were off and you weren't and you literally answered the phone and I was like, hey, what are you doing? And you're like, I'll just sitting backstage waiting to go. And I was like, oh, well, I'll call you back. And you're like, no, what's that. up? Yep. And I was like, T, I was like, I you don't know this, but I'm reading the scripts and it's literally the stories are just jumping off the pages. And I was like, I really want to give this a shot. And you were like, I love this idea. Yeah. Let me call you back. Yeah. When I'm done. And then, hello. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Let me call you back because I got to walk on stage. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact yeah. that you took the call, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That of speaks to like the, yeah. that's, I mean, that's just the type of friend you are because some yeah. people are like, oh, I called him back, you know? Yeah. But as busy as you are, as busy as you are, even when you're working, you still make time for your people. Of course. I just want people yeah. to know that oh. that's who you are. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because that's, that's like, that's, a lot of people think that you're just, as even, they don't know you on a personal level. They yeah. just see this huge giant man who just does so many great things and is so talented, but like on a real personal 
no, you are really that you're available to your people. I appreciate that. And I love that. you for that. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I love you too, Chris. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that's people that's because people always look at where you are. They look at the top. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh wow, look up there, look up there. They don't look at all the steps that it took mm. to get there and for how the bottom all exists. Wow, you're all the way up there. No, look at all of that. That's yeah. the journey. It is the journey. Yeah, that's yeah. the journey. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Was there any time um in your life, like as you continue to climb, that you're like, whoa. Like I know, even where you are now, billionaire, like established, new studio, still expanding. Have the, you have the biggest studio right now, yeah. bigger than I feel like it's in the United States. Period. You have mm, yours is large. Landmass, yeah. Landmass, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, is there any time as you're uh, maybe Pinewood may be bigger, but anyway, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is um is there any time where you hit moments where you're like, ooh, like God, can I go higher? Because you have a book, higher is waiting. But do you ever even doubt yourself? Like, oof. No, at 53, I've had enough experiences to, to know that th- that I have to surrender. Mm. When I did my, uh, when I bought the um, my first studio, mm-hmm. I thought, okay, this is it. It's great. I'm not building a studio. Mm-hmm. I got it's paid for. I, mm-hmm. you know, outgrew it. Yeah. Next studio, same thing. Yep. Outgrew it in no time. Mm-hmm. Then Greenbrier, I thought it would be there forever. Outgrew that thing. We were on top of each other in that building. We were. <laughs> and but but what I learned is that every time I was supposed to move to the next level and I didn't because I was comfortable because I didn't want to uh, pay more. I didn't mm-hmm. want to grow. I thought I was where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Everything in my life got uncomfortable until I moved. So I completely. <laughs> Everything all right over there? Everybody all right? Everybody all right? <laughs> so, so, so I completely, I completely learned the hard way. Mm. Like, just case in point, uh, Crock Street Market right now, yes. which was the my first big, bigger studio on, on Crock Street. Mm-hmm. I was, I was hired. I had hired these bootleg carpenters to come in and fix it up and all this other stuff and mm. and um i was i was i'm like good i got this building i paid for it, it was we, this is where i'm gonna make my studio that thing wasn't even as big as the stage one is right right now. so <laughs> so i'm there trying to force it and ended up on the news uh, monica kaufman or richard belcher talking about channel two news <laughs> tyler perry's building a whole studio without permits <laughs> I, I tell you, so I was just like, I was so devastated because I'd hired this guy to do the job, and then, but the message came to me very clear. You're too big to do it wrong. Oh! Too big to do it wrong. You got to do it good. right. You got to do it gotta right. Got to do it right. I was still, still pushing for, uh, try to make it work. The neighbors started complaining. Every, we didn't have enough parking. There was only parking for maybe 80 cars. Wow. And I was mad, and I didn't want to go. And so when my lawyer called me and told me about Greenbrier, I went over there, and I... Uh, you know, I was like, I don't want to be over here. I went, laid down, couldn't sleep, went over there late at mm-hmm. night, and I was praying about it. Mm-hmm. Look, and I looked closely at the gates, and there was, because it's all padded, locked, and chained up, and the gates had Bible scriptures on it. And Psalms 91, my favorite scripture, was on the gate. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, God, I get it. So I bought it, thought I would not grow it, but I did. But, but right after that, outgrowing it, here comes this offer for. Fort McPherson. You know, I told, yes. I called the mayor and said, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. I'm going to move to Douglasville. He's like, no, no, no. I want you, want you to come see Fort McPherson. Mm-hmm. When I walked into Fort McPherson, the first thing I thought was, oh, I'm supposed to do this. Wow. It wasn't, it wasn't where I had been before mm-hmm. with the thought of, oh gosh, let me just get it paid for. This is, I had to learn to be open to where I was going and build for where I was going rather than living and being closed and staying where I was, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So understanding that yeah. through some hard trials, I learned to just surrender when it shows up. Wow. I want to touch on something that um, you've helped me in my personal life um, when it comes to going higher. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when um, We've been told about men's? No, not yet. Okay, We're going to okay, get there. Okay, okay, okay. okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah, because we talked about that too. Relationships, yes, 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 yes. Um, But it was in um, my living. Mm-hmm. It was, we were shooting... I want to say Medea, maybe at Halloween, the second one, one of the movies. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was still styling you. We were mm-hmm. in the bathroom changing Medea's um, wardrobe. And you were like, where are you living? Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm renting a townhouse. Mm-hmm. And you were like, oh, okay. And you're like, you don't own it? And I said, no. And mm-hmm. he goes, you need to go buy a house. And I was like, well, sir, 
the way we work, I was like, we work and then we save our money to live when we're not working. It's hard to save when you're just like living, you know what I'm saying, basically living paycheck to paycheck. And um, you were like, okay, well, how much is a house? Mm. And I was like, well, the ones I'm looking at like would be like two fifty, three hundred thousand. And you're like, well, how much is the down payment? I was like, like if you put ten percent down, you may do like fifteen thousand between twenty and fifteen thousand. You're like, okay, so what are you waiting on? I was like, well, you like go get your house. And it was in that <laughs> moment I was like, good lord. <laughs> What a boss. <laughs> Go get your house. So I got that house and I came back to a set of, we, by then it was, we were shooting Have and Have Nots because we, we moved on to the next project. Mm -hmm. Back and quick. You were yeah. like, Krista got, she got her house. She was like, I'll give you four years, you'll be in a mansion. Within four years, I don't know if you remember saying that. We were on set, you called me and you were like, it's time for you to get that little apartment. He called my townhouse an apartment, y'all. A four bedroom, three and a half bath. It was three. beautiful. It was beautiful. But I knew, I, here, again, in my life, what I learned and what I understood was be open when be it open. shows up. Yes. That, that's not arrogance. That's not anything. There's so many people who I know I've met in this lifetime being having been very poor and now doing very well, mm -hmm. who on that side of it, they never apologize for it. Mm -hmm. We as black people constantly apologize when we have something good. Like you talk about that lady who talked about stop showing off, you should be, you should be. See, that's somebody who don't even understand that it's based on the experiences mm -hmm. of what we have done as black people in this country, mm -hmm. the things our ancestors did, our success has already been bought and paid for. Mm -hmm. If we could get our mentality around mm -hmm. what that means, yes. you wouldn't walk around apologizing for it. I know that's right. Yeah. And you've, yeah. you've taught me to live unapologetically. Yes, it's okay. Yep. And even it's when okay. I was living in a, a scarcity mindset, you're like, Chris, I know you feel like you just got through the door or yeah. just one foot. You're like, you're in the door. You're all right. You're all right. Mm -hmm. Go get what you want. And I yeah. was like, well, I don't know if I can. He's like, stop living like that. Because yeah. you said that you um, would go buy what you could afford. Like, I yeah. know I can handle this. Yep. And then you're in there for two years. And you're like, I should have just got what I wanted. Because God continued to multiply, Constantly. multiply. Yep. You're like, I could have just got what I wanted. Got what I wanted. Yes. And many times in my life, I've been in a situation. Why did I buy this? Why am I, <laughs> why didn't buy this? I didn't, it, when that's right there. Yes. Yeah. 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 So you, you helped me to, one, dream bigger, mm. to open my lens and be like, okay, I can do this. Mm. And every time I go higher, my life just makes room. It makes room. My ideas get bigger. The money it there comes and it it's never like a oh god how how about take care of this? No, there you go. And then and then you realize after four years you go, man, I just breezed through that. I yes. wasn't even that wasn't even a stretch mm -hmm. because your mind mm. became open to the possibility of it what is. it could be. Yes. Yeah. It is. But that also comes with exposure. Mm. I'm a young girl from Martin, Tennessee. Yeah. Population ten thousand people, yeah. like super mm -hmm. small, and you have. One, I remember the first time you invited me to the island mm -hmm. and I was sitting at the table with everybody and I, I don't know if you could feel the timidness and you were like, if you're at this table, it's because you belong. Mm -hmm. And I remember one morning just walking around, just touching the leaves. Mm -hmm. I had never seen an island, a private island, a private island. I've been mm -hmm. on an island, but not an island like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this man, this is his own island. Like, just walk, if I, I, I don't even need all this. Like, this is possible. Yeah. Then that's exposure. You know what I'm saying? Just knowing that. I know somebody who has done it. Yeah. This is something I can do as well. And the places you've taken me, we've traveled the world together, has opened my eyes to so much where a lot of people aren't privy to seeing. <laughs> Think about a couple of things, but that traveling the world. But 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 let me just say this, then I'll go to traveling the world. Uh -huh. Oprah, Oprah did that for me. Mm. When I first went to her house, she did that for me. I was like, oh, this is possible. Mm -hmm. You can actually dream and be, and I, I'll never forget, I'm on video saying this, I'm probably 30 five at the 36 my first movie had just come out mm. and I was just like oh I, I could have this yes. it took all of the rings and blinders off and I was just like okay God what you got yeah what yeah. I I'm, a, I'm gonna do the best I can to honor it I'm gonna be good to people I'm gonna everybody who comes in my life I'm gonna make sure that they are if, are touched and affected in a beautiful way that yes. their lives are changed that they're mm -hmm. really see and dream mm -hmm. I'm everything you show me God I'm gonna try to pass it on to somebody else and everybody who can get it I'll take it mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. so that's the feeling I want the people around me to have that's the feeling I want the people at the studio to have because at this point what's mm -hmm. what else is what else is there to do exactly yeah. exactly that's so good yeah they're traveling the world just like um she don't like roaches so <laughs> so we 
We were in Bora Bora. <laughs> Boy, a, boy. A really nice hotel. Do y'all know them beautiful places over the water? Yeah, little bungalow. It was nice. <laughs> Some of them, if, if you walk in a hotel that's very expensive and there's roach spray in the closet, something, something's up. So I didn't catch that. Yeah, I didn't read the. I didn't read as the room. As soon as I walked in, I saw that roach spray because the place is beautiful. The glass bottom looking out. Yeah. I was like, oh okay. I'm hundred. I'm without Crystal doing her room. <laughs> screams. Just screams. <laughs> She, 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 she don't Literally, do the roaches. She don't do the roaches. I do not do roaches. I was like, they're like, the people came in the room, that manager, and he was like, oh, I'm talking about, yeah, it was a big roach. He was like, oh, this is a water bug. I said, no, nah, that's, that's a, a cockroach. Roach. Yeah. We, we, we from the South, yeah. and we ghetto as hell. That's a cockroach. Y'all got to get that thing. So, get it. Y'all yeah. came in there moving furniture yeah. for me. Yeah. Y'all yeah. like, yeah. first this of all, it's hot in thing. here. Just Turn the air on. Turn the air on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Or anytime I said Beyonce, she was ready to go. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. The first time Miami. we took me. I was in Miami, you guys, um, <laughs> on a vacation. I always I like to travel by myself sometimes. And then my girls will come meet me after I've had my me time. And um, so it was before my girls landed. And I had unpacked. I was staying in Miami for a while. I had unpacked my clothes. And I never do that. I never unpack and hang things up. I just live out the suitcase. This particular trip, I had unpacked. And I get a call. And he's like, hey, I need you to... Um, pack some things for me. I've got to go to Copenhagen. And I was like, okay. And um, he was, I said, okay, I'll, I'll get some things done. So I had called Armani. I was like, hey, Armani, can you FaceTime me so yeah. I can, you can help me with this. I'm not in town. And then I get another call and you were like, well, I need you to pack your things too because we're going to see Beyonce. <laughs> Y'all, I ain't never packed. I ain't never got to the airport that fast. I, I called you back. <laughs> I called you back. I called you back. Because I knew you had friends, I knew you had pack. I call you back. I say, um, so you think you go? You go? I'm at the airport. I'm, like, you, I'm gonna call you back. Going I'm, through I'm going through security. I'm gonna call you back. <laughs> I'll call you back. On the way. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the most amazing experience. Um, we flew on your jet to Copenhagen. I got to meet Beyonce for the first time. Mm -hmm. Y'all like, dude, we need a landing pad. She gonna faint. Yep. What's gonna yep. happen? Yep. Oh my yep. goodness. And um, that was just that was crazy. Thank mm -hmm. you for the many experiences. Yeah, but that but, was that when it started. Exposure. Exposure. That's what I that's what I I completely love and hope that more of us have. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't take you don't have to travel the world to mm -hmm. to you could just get out of your neighborhood, go to other neighborhoods, yes. see other things. Like when I was struggling and broke in my twenties, like man, I would I I barely had nickel or uh, anything to eat, but I would go to an open house mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in the nicest neighborhoods and yeah. I would drive um, test drive cars just not for the materialness of it, but just to know it's possible. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And because in my neighborhood, there was there was the drug boys or the preachers that were the only ones doing well. Wow. So I didn't see anybody else that, you know, was in the movie business mm -hmm. or anything. I didn't see any of that. So coming to Atlanta really opened my mind up to the possibility of there are other things you can be other than those two. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. That's good. Um, something else that I have learned from you is generosity. Mm. Um, I've always just naturally just been a nice person, speak to everybody. Um, but it was first, it was Andy Norman, who mm. we love, works at love the studio. Andy. Yes. That's my right hand over there. Yeah. Oh my goodness, love him. Yeah. And um, he called me one day. He, had, he always goes to church on Wednesdays, mm -hmm. and um, he said, "I don't know why God put you on my spirit." But he told me to tell you, Andy. your living is in your giving. Mm. He said, I don't know what this, why, what it was. And at this time, I, was, I wasn't I was even costume designing. Mm. I was just a costumer. Mm. So that, you know, that's just like, okay, right. what does that mean? You know, right. Right. <laughs> he's like, your living is in your giving. So um, we take a break. I get a call from Ozzy, who was the president at the time. And he goes, hey, Tyler want me to call you to see if you'd be interested in costume designing the next season of shows. And I was like, ooh, that's that's a big, you know I'm saying, a big job. Like, I don't know if I'm ready for this, if I'm prepared. And I ended up praying about it, and I ended up taking the job. And when I walked in for my first day, Andy was like, I didn't know what where you about. were going yeah. or what it was about. He said, but you're you're mm -hmm. going like, babe, you're going higher. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Andy, this is crazy. And he's like, don't forget what I said. And he always reminds me, and I never forget that. Yeah. But just being around you. Um, and styling you for the years I styled you and actually getting a, a close up look at how you run things, the way you give mm. silently. Mm. People don't even know the half mm. of the things you do. Cause you can be sitting in your living room watching TV, and be like, mm, I wanna help that lady. 
mm. and figure out, find her. I need, I want to yeah. help her rebuild whatever. You know what I'm saying? You always bless people. And um, I remember it was during COVID and you called me and you said, hey, I just want to check on you. Are you good? Because we weren't working. You mm. wanted to make sure I was, I was okay. I said, no, Tyler, you're taking good care of me. Mm. I'm good. And in turn, I turned around and called Herman. Remember, he had told mm -hmm. us the story right. on the island. Yep. Yep. And it just, that's, I feel like, when you're around somebody of your caliber, those are the things you need to take from them. Mm. You know, like learning how to, like that was a valuable thing for me. Like this man will, like, he just gives freely yeah. and with a cheerful heart. And that was one of the things I was like, when I'm in this position, like, cause I, I would already do, already do it. Like when we come back to work, I buy people lunch. Cause I knew they weren't, hadn't been working for a while. So right. I would do what I could do. Right. You know, so I couldn't buy my car. No, but it's <laughs> the same, that's the same thing though. Yeah. If giving, giving doesn't have a value yeah. when it comes from a pure place. Mm -hmm. It could be $10 billion. It could be two pennies. Yes. It doesn't have a value when it comes from purity. Yeah. Giving, I, giving is about what it does for the other person. Exactly. So. And mm -hmm. I learned that from you. So I just, mm -hmm. that's another thing. Like, being around you, I've learned so many things, mm. just even how to carry myself. Because a lot of times you don't know why God's putting you around someone. I had no idea why you chose me mm. or why God put it on your heart to be like, her, I want her to come and help mm. me with this. But in that, it was literally molding me to be able to sit in the space I'm in now and to be able to carry it. And you know what I'm saying? That's why I tell <clears throat> everyone who is is around somebody who they are wondering, like I, like I was around people like Oprah and and you know T.D. Jakes and thing. I was like, why I, these people are so amazing? How am I? What am I? Yes. What is this about? But they were there to teach me something, mm -hmm. and I watched the grace of how they carried themselves. Yes, I watched the compassion, and I watched how they treated everybody around them. You know, so all good. people want to do, do is be seen and heard, right? Mm -hmm. So if you sometimes that's all they need. Yeah, and so when I'm helping someone and. And as you said, most of it's private because mm -hmm. the world don't need to know it. Yep. But there are moments where people want to, to know it. And then there are moments where I say, okay, people should know this because there's so much hell in the world right now. So let's see see what who, how much good this can spread. Yes, yeah. exactly. But it's, it's really, really important mm -hmm. to be able to have what you have and be mm -hmm. or have an open hand and heart to help yeah. other people yes i get that from my mother i mean i would wake up when i was a kid and step out of the bed i would step on somebody on the floor i'm mm. um, like who are these people she's like Shh, they needed a place to stay mm -hmm. right so um she would she wouldn't give them no money mm -hmm. but she would she would you know you couldn't get 20 dollars out of my mother yeah. but she would <laughs> feed them she would clothe them she yes. would she's just she was just amazing so, i love that yeah. i love that yeah. you talk about your mother and i know this is she's someone who holds mm. a dear dear place in your heart yeah. um and you've talked about the dysfunction of your home growing up what was it with that little boy because mm. you say in your book um hire is waiting you say that ever since i was a little boy i've known there was something greater than myself something bigger something stronger something higher yeah i know for me as a kid living in martin tennessee i didn't see anything that god had put in my mind i didn't see anything that even reflected that i'm like so why do i feel like i can mm. i only saw it on tv mm. what was it with that little boy living in new orleans yeah. it was like is something bigger for me than this. That was that's the, that was the most frustrating part of my life and career is having all of that vision inside of me mm -hmm. and then not seeing a path, mm -hmm. not seeing anybody else who had done it, not mm -hmm. seeing anybody around. I was just like, how is this even possible for me to obtain yeah. this? But for me, I my mother took me to church all the time, mm -hmm. so I I just would hear my uncle preaching about, you know, if you pray, God will answer your prayers. Mm -hmm. And I just believed from a little boy that God was answering my prayers, especially when I got these. I I, I thought that the television, floor model television, y'all y'all don't know what that oh, is. Oh, I do. The floor model <laughs> television. I thought that um, the people inside on Gilligan's Island, the TV show, were inside the TV and I wanted to go behind it and open it up and find them. And well, my father would have killed me though. So I prayed. I said, God, wow. send me some little people to take care of. And wow. I'm leaving uh, school. I come home, and there's a house, a bamboo house, on mm -hmm. sitting on the porch. The lady across the street had left, had moved away, and she asked my mother if I could have her parakeets, Fifi and Pierre, and wow. they spoke. Mm -hmm. So as a little boy, I'm like, God heard my prayer. He heard it. Yeah. yeah. So from then mm. on, from then on, it was like, okay, this prayer thing works. It works. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. prayer. Yeah. It's <laughs> Works. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Gotta get my coffee to get up yeah, there right, with right. you in the morning. <laughs> right. 
the night is up here. Yeah, right. Are you exactly. Down here? Yeah, exactly right. 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 Gowns, <laughs> nice gowns. Right. Nice gowns. Aretha. 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 She was something. Yeah, yeah. I, I I like to ask that question because a lot of times um, when people see us where we are now, it's mm. like, where did that start? So mm. I want definitely wanted to touch on that. Um, I know you can just say this about God and mm-hmm. faith. I know the world is changing and people are getting away from so many things, and it, it makes sense because because of what church has become. Oof. But my whole hope is that if people have a relationship with God mm-hmm. and believing, that they never ever equate that to something that man is. Because they will always let you down. Preacher, pastor, priests will Mm -hmm. always let you down. They are not God. They are human. They are allowed to be flawed. They are allowed to make mistakes. Get out of my business. So so I give them the grace of being human. Yes. But... When I need grace, I go to God, not for them. You yes, understand? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I just literally just yesterday mm-hmm. had this conversation with my brother Marquis, and he was like, "You know, I just church hurt." And he was mm-hmm. like, "I just don't feel." He said, "I just don't want to go through this again." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I said, I literally told him, I said, Marquis, I was like, um, the pastor is not God. Mm-hmm. I was like, he's human just like we are." Yep. I said, "You, we're going to church to get closer to God. Right. If that person is delivering the message the way you need it, we have to give them grace in their personal life." Right. Like we can't judge that, or or that ain't that ain't your business. Yeah, they, uh, if, God, if God sends a message and you know when that message is yours coming yes. through that person, oh, yeah. you know God spoke to you through that person. Mm-hmm. It's easy to start to see the person as God mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and miss the spirit that came through. Yes. Listen, Oof. I've gotten messages from winos on the street that was like, oh, that was God just spoke to me. Uh huh. So I've learned to completely be when you when you listen and you're open and you yeah. hear, you know, mm-hmm. you know. Because and what in my life, I if I pray something mm-hmm. and like I have friends who are praying for me, a prophet like Andy will do you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. God will send somebody to confirm the exact prayer, the exact thought, mm-hmm. the exact thing I'm going through, almost in the exact words. And yeah. I go, okay, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. The Lord, he keeps talking to me. He all in your business. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 like, what you been listening to? Right, yeah. right. So good, mm. so good. Um, so let's talk about something that. You and I talk about Uh-oh. my man. Oh lord, oh lord. <laughs> my man, my man, my man. Yeah. So for the longest, like you've seen me go through different relationships, and recently, it was the night that we all went to dinner after you um, moderated Michelle Obama's book tour mm-hmm. here in Atlanta, and you said, "Crystal, you are vibrating here. Yeah. Your man is here." And I was like, "Ooh, you trying to tell me I'm low vibrational, Tyler? What are you trying to say?" And I was like, "Ooh, I had to think about that. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, like, am I?" You know what I'm saying? You were like, you're here and yeah. he's he's up here. You gotta you gotta go higher yeah. in that to get, area to too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I was like, wow, that's crazy. I was um, I probably had a gummy that night, so I was you know, <laughs> I, look. I get super spiritual when I'm on them gummies, but yes. it, that sounds good. Okay, go ahead. Right. It was real good. Um, Just five milligrams of weed. That's all I could do. <laughs> You know, if I try anything else, I'd be like, no, no, y'all come get me. I'm going to the hospital. Five milligrams. Going to the hospital. Yeah, yeah five milligrams. Um, but but understanding, yeah, and 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 having people meet you at your worth. Yeah. That's what I was. Yeah. Yes, when you yeah. said that we were one of our many nights at your island, darling, in the King's Landing Room, mm. at the table, you said mm. it, it just hit you. You probably was on the gummy there too. Mm. You was like, meet me at my worth, yeah. and we were all like, wow, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And 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 anybody who can't do that, that doesn't mean they're not worthy of mm-mm, you. Mm-mm. That means that they need to either attempt, mm-hmm. try, learn, mm-hmm. find out enough about you to be able to figure out what that is. Yes. And that's not money because, yep. it, because you listen. A, a lot of women, especially black women, and mm-hmm. I might get in trouble for saying this, but I will. In the in in our society right now, mm-hmm. b- black women are making a lot more money for mm-hmm. the most part than yeah. black men. Right, there are a lot of black men who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you, if you can find love, if that man works, you know, at whatever job, mm-hmm. and is a good man and is good to you, mm-hmm. and honors and honors the house and honors his wife and does what he can, mm-hmm. because his his gift may not be your gift. Exactly. That is okay. Mm-hmm. That's not somebody who's beneath you. Yeah. That's somebody who came to love you at your worth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? Yes. And as long as he's secure in himself to mm-hmm. know that, yep, she makes most of the money. All I can pay is the light bill. As long as she's comfortable enough to say, I'm going to cover the mortgage and all the other stuff. You pay the light bill, baby. You can take me to dinner every now and then. Mm-hmm. That is fine. Yeah. That's fine. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And, but that's so hard for a lot of people to take in because that means, no, 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 I need somebody to, who is, <laughs> <laughs> I need, I, they need to make five times more and I got to have, the, I got to have, well, you uh, keep, but go keep, keep, go keep your list, baby. Yeah. God, God bless you. Hope it happens. Go and keep your list. <laughs> But when you talk about just someone to love you and support yes. you, I, I know people who have, who whose men can't touch what they make. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you see them together, that love, that support, that that I got you, babe, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I remember we, I was having a conversation with you, and I was going. I I can admit that I had fallen under that. Like, okay, I actually may have misunderstood what "meet me at my worth" meant. I thought "meet me at my work" was "meet me at my net worth." Meet my net worth, <laughs> right, right, no, not your net worth. Right. Meet me at least. Meet me at my net worth. Yeah, okay. no, that's your net worth. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was talking to you. I was like, and Tyler, I was like, this, this, and this, this, and this, and I've done this, this, and you're like, wait, 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 stop. Mm -hmm. He was like, don't make it about money. Mm -hmm. And this is when I was like, oh my gosh. Like it was like, pfft, like it just went off and I was like, I see what you're saying. You were like, Crystal, I used to do the same thing. I would like be doing all these things for someone or people around me. And I'm like, they're not doing, I'm not getting anything in return, yeah. you know? And we fall into that sometimes. And you said, but then I thought about it. They can't do for me the way I do for them. No. It's just like, no. they can't. No. You got, and when you explained it like that, if he is giving you all these other things, then that's something you work with. And I did. I I literally completely misconstrued what meet me at my worth meant in that mm. moment. But worth is more than that, right? You know, and that's right. when I was like, wow, like this is it's way deeper. Yeah, you got to remove the money from the situation yeah. because it's just going to cloud it. Mm -hmm. And then you have your girlfriend and this friend there saying, yes. "Girl, he's doing this and he ain't got that." And he, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. you don't understand the love that we have for exactly. each other, and that is what is important. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, there are some good men mm -hmm. who. Can't meet you at your net worth. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and if you can find a man who is secure enough within himself mm -hmm. to stand in that space. Yeah. 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 Something I'll good. tell you the story. O Oprah tells a story about her and Stedman. She was they were in Hawaii mm -hmm. and um, she was walking, this is years ago. She walked in the store, he was behind her. Mm -hmm. And no, I'll tell you this story. This because I was there for this one. Okay. She, uh, we were coming out of the color purple premiere in in uh New York, mm -hmm. and it's Tina Turner, Oprah, me, and Gail. We're all getting in the car, and you just said that, so it was Tina well, Turner. Well, listen, that's when I first knew. I, <laughs> that's when I first knew something had shifted. In okay, my life. wow. Because I, because <laughs> Oprah walks out and they're screaming, Oprah, Oprah, Oprah. Tina walks out and go, Tina, Tina. I go out and hear Tyler, Tyler. I go, whoa. This is very early on. Oh so my I, gosh. I, 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 they're pushing us into the limo, and um, I'm, I turn back, and Stedman, the security, is pushing him out of the way. Mm -hmm. Not letting him in. Wow. I watched him tap the man on the shoulder and say, hey, hey. It was, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Graham. And he let him in the car. But do you know, when I saw that man who's six foot six in that situation, I went, wow. wow. Look at the grace in mm -hmm. how he carried it. He yes. didn't get a car with an attitude. He mm -hmm. wasn't mad. Mm -hmm. Which takes me back to the story in Hawaii when, when they were in the store and everybody swarmed around. Oprah, he was watching protectively, mm, and uh, wow. and after she was, the, she was leaving the store. The store owner, older older person, said to her, "Listen, I watched that man how he loves you. Uh, I watched that man how his aura is all around you, making mm. sure you're okay and safe. So, so and and Stepman does well in life. Mm -hmm, yeah, but I don't know nobody doing well as Oprah. <laughs> Hello, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it can't, 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 can't be about the money. Yes. Can't be about the money. That was like that was a good nugget that you gave me recently, and I was like, wow, because you do get caught up in the what your girls are saying and what society is saying. Yeah, because saying. that's gonna, but that's that's, and if you try to make it about the money, then it's always gonna be about the money. Mm -hmm. And the money is is you have to understand that when you start to make money and do well, that becomes a part of the perception of who you are. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. That was the thing that bothered me about it. it was like, all he sees is my money. All he sees is my money. I'm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm a good person. I'm right. I had to let all that go. I was like, yeah, well, the money's a part of your person now, so let that be. Wow. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. Now, when you started making money, we talk about money as a part of the person. Listen, that's a whole other podcast. The <laughs> financial literacy. Yes, uh -huh. yes. But anyway, yes. go ahead. Let's, yeah. Um, even like with like family and friends, what did you go through when you started? <laughs> he said, mm -mm. because like, I'm, that's the thing I start to deal with now, you know, just the entitlement or like, gimme, gimme, gimme. 
and the random text messages, and you're like, I'm just waiting on them to ask me for something. I had to tell, yeah, because we usually what happens is, uh, you know, they don't they don't talk to you forever, and then they're like, Hey, how you doing? I've, mm-hmm. You've been on my mind. God <laughs> told me to pray for you on my heart. I'm thinking, okay, ten, nine, eight. Can you send me thirty thousand dollars because I need, <laughs> you know? And then I had another family member send. And it said, and I was hurt by it. I said, "Listen, you you sent me a text asking for thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. That's offensive. Like, call me, yeah. see how oh I'm doing. My, yes. And then, and then I don't mind. You know, I don't mind giving you the money. Mm-hmm. Well, this family member got offended. So I've never asked you for nothing else. I was just after. Well, I was just saying how Im, how impersonal the text is. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. A little while later, I get another text. Mm-hmm. I need I need thirty thousand dollars. Same person. Mm-hmm. And then. The follow-up text was, make it 40. Tyler. I kid you not. And I was hurt by the scent, the fact that. Make it 40. Yeah. I, yes. Just that it was just so blatantly like, I'm just the money. Right. Yeah. And I get to this place called, it's this thing called compassion fatigue, where you mm. just get exhausted from giving. Mm-hmm. Like, and you, and for me, I have to go away and wow. pray and get, get myself back together. Cause I get to get the, uh, my face kind mm-hmm. of place. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So. Yeah. So I have to go back and get right with that. Mm-hmm. But having that, having you know, family members, you don't, you don't. That's I, crazy. It's, yeah, I just I, wonder how you do on your level because nobody's calling me for thirty. Well, one right. time they did call right. me for forty. <laughs> right, right. So let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, I, I, but you know what? I learned to accept them as who they are, mm-hmm. and the family doesn't necessarily have to be the people that are your blood. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I started surrounding myself with people who genuinely cared about me. Yeah. What if we were on a boat on just when we were in our groups on the trips. Mm-hmm. If, if we're on a boat, if we're on the island, if we're, you know these people care. Yes. They mm-hmm. can't pay for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but they are there because they want to support you and care for you. And that yes. feels more like family yeah. to me. Mm-hmm. So I my family gets money, um, but they have to work. Mm-hmm. That's good. Or they won't get money. Right. Because I'm not uh um uh, uh the bank. Mm-hmm. And I'm not the government. Yeah. And I think it's important that people work. Yes. So working is so important. Mm-hmm. I yeah. agree. I agree. Was there ever a moment where you had survivor's remorse, where you, the only person in your family that has made it, where you feel like, no, I, I feel bad that I'm the one that made it and everybody else did. And so I got it. I have to do these things. First year I made money. I, I went from being dead broke. I was 28 years old. I made $130,000. I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, $130,000. Got to the end of the year, had nothing to pay my taxes because I'd given it all away. Wow. I had so much guilt oh. that I'd given it to all the family, all friends. Mm-hmm. Next year, I think I made a million and a half. Mm-hmm. Same thing happened again. Wow. Next year, I made seven million. Same thing happened again because I had so much guilt wow. because I had, and I think this is something that we as black people carry because of what we've been through. Mm-hmm. And when you have, you think, oh my God, I need to bring everybody else up with me. Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful thought. Yeah. But in the beginning, mm-hmm. that's bullshit. <laughs> take Talk that, about it, that's t- real. That's bullshit, get, take that out of your mind mm-hmm. because I'm gonna tell you right now, if you have a boat that can help you get to one from this place to that place yeah. so that you can get a bigger boat mm-hmm. and you can only take two or three people, don't let everybody on that boat. And you got to be also careful because when you put too many people on the boat, there's some trying to put holes in it because Ooh. they want it to sink mm-hmm. because they don't like that you're sailing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you have to be careful, mm, right? Yeah. Or, or there's some that are putting holes in the boat because they don't feel that they're worthy of it. Mm-hmm. And I've had that too, where I was trying to pull people up to, come on, come on, this is far as we can do. We've been together all these years. We can make this happen. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. But the whole, the whole thing that I had to realize is that some people cannot survive at certain altitudes. Mm-hmm. So if you're pulling somebody up a hill who, when you get to 10,000 feet, they can't breathe, you're going to kill them. Yeah. So it's okay to leave them there until they learn the conditioning of what it takes to be at 10,000 feet. Wow. Yeah. That's good, T. That's good. It's true. I, I'm going through a season. Um, I just did an episode called um, Purging Season in Season <clears> 1. <throat> and it was just about... God Say that re- again. I'm sorry. Oh, <clears throat> purging Season, mm-hmm, Season yes, 1. Yeah. yeah, Season 1, I did an episode called Purging Season. Mm-hmm. And it's literally like God was just removing people, like friends, family. It was just like, Lord, what is happening right now? Mm. And you're starting to see that like you said, people can't breathe at the altitude that you're going to. Or you did a speech about, I think it was a, 
a commencement speech on, um, you talk about rocket boosters. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I was like, when you said that, that's exactly what came to mind when I thought about, Lord, what is this that you're taking me through right now? Yeah. Because I felt like I was losing people I was really close to. Yeah. And, um, but everybody can't go. Yeah. You know? And it's, it, you ever seen a bunch of kids on a merry-go-round mm-hmm. who goes faster and faster and faster and faster and faster? Mm-hmm. What you find is that the people who are closest to the center mm-hmm. can hold the tightest. Mm-hmm. The ones who are out toward the, who are holding on are getting the most of the G-forces. Mm-hmm. It's too, they can't handle it. Yeah. So those are the people who are falling. So I call it the spin theory. Sometimes in your life, mm-hmm. it'll, you'll start to spin and you're spinning up to the next level yeah. and people start to fall off. And let me tell you something, it hurts, mm-hmm. it's lonely, especially when it's somebody that you really, really loved and had a great time with and wished that they could be there with you. Mm-hmm. But you have to understand and realize mm-hmm. that that toxicity yeah. is poison to your wings. Mm. It will cause you to crash. So you have to be able to say, I love you, mm-hmm but I'm sorry, this does not work for me anymore. Yeah. Then you get this shit, oh, you bougie, you changing. What's, oh, yo, now you got all this and you don't want, uh, mm-hmm. uh, none of that matters. Yeah. Walk through the pain of the loneliness. Come tell you something, mm-hmm. the higher you go, the smaller that circle gets. It is, you're so yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just getting started and I see it. I'm like, and it's okay. okay, it's okay because I, I promise you, if you ask God to give you what you need, mm-hmm. they show up. Wow, they do. Yeah, they show up, and I have what I need. I yeah. do. Like I really have a good core, and everybody that's around me, I know they love me. Mm-hmm. They support me wholeheartedly. We all have our own thing going on, right. and it's no jealousy. Right. And that's it, what that's what you want. Mm-hmm. Somebody because jealousy will show up mm-hmm. in ways that you didn't even expect. Mm-hmm. It. If people who've been right up under you as mm-hmm. long as you didn't ex- ex- exceed what they thought you could be. The minute you start to go higher than they believed you could go, mm-hmm. it's ugly. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. That's a real thing. Yeah. And it is lonely. It yeah. is. They say it's lonely at the top, but no, yeah. you're not lying. But here's what I had to learn how to do. I had to learn to get all of my friends. Nobody can give you all everything you need. Mm-hmm. So all of my friends were uh, brought something. It's like a like a, you have a potluck where you could bring everybody yes. brings mm-hmm. something to eat. Mm-hmm. And some people may be able to bring fruit, some, some can bring vegetables, some can bring chicken, some can bring... So I had a, all of my friends bring me something different mm-hmm. yes. so that I have all that I need. Oh, I like that. Because you can't get it from one person. Absolutely. You know? yeah. That's so good. Yeah. I love that. Um, Denora had actually spoke on something recently that piggybacks off of what you said. She goes, a lot of times when God brings people in your life, you're like, why am I not getting what I'm putting into this? Mm -hmm. Like I'm pouring, I'm pouring, I'm pouring into this person, but I'm not getting it back. And she said that sometimes that person isn't putting your life to pour back into you. You're on assignment to them. And it's somebody else that's going to bring you what you need. That's, that's, you're 100% right. That's exactly Mm -hmm. right. And, and you have to understand that when it's your time to pour, Mm -hmm. do that. Yes. And, and hopefully, Mm -hmm that seed that you're watering will start to grow in that person. Mm. Cause I've seen this like in you, mm-hmm. Mm. like seeing you come up to this place of like, look, I poured into her now look. Mm-hmm. And I've got thousands of those examples at yes. the studios. Like I poured in, look at him now. Mm-hmm. And it, it warms me so much mm-hmm. because when you're pouring, pour with pure intention. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you don't worry about being hurt if, 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 if it doesn't work out. Yeah. Just just be pure in your intention. Don't let people change mm-hmm. your intention. Even if they give you their ass to kiss after you were trying to help them. Mm-hmm. Don't stop who you are going and help the next person. Mm, yeah. You know? Yep. It's so that is so important. Mm-hmm. So important. That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah so good. Bit, bit. Yeah, she's been dropping some mm-hmm. nuggets. I'm like, yeah. girl, God is really talking mm-hmm. to you and me. I love it. Um so I want to go like back to some of your journey. You started off in the Chitlin circuit with Medea Plays. You worked your way up to owning your own studio. Um, at the time that you were like doing the smaller plays, what was it from like even actually? I want to go back to when you decided like I. But what what was that in between phase of like right before things went crazy, like when you were doing the smaller plays? What was that like? There was no in between phase. Mm. I was twenty eight years old. Mm-hmm. I was twenty seven, broke, homeless. Mm-hmm. 28, I had been trying to do the show for seven years. Mm. And in 1998, the show took off. 
So it was, it was famine, 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 struggle, struggle, desert, desert, desert. Jesus. And then all of a sudden, it was abundance. It was the abundant rain pouring. So I went from 90, when I started mm. in 98, this is why I feel like I missed 12 years of my life though. I was working so hard. Mm -hmm. 98, uh, I, uh, at 28, and I, I, I kind of came to myself at 40, like yeah. I woke up going, whoa, mm -hmm. you, you, did, you did it. Yeah. But you missed so everything. Because there's so many of those moments I don't remember. Mm. I was so laser focused mm. on, on making the success work. And yeah. also I was, afraid of going back mm. that we mm -hmm. talked about earlier. Yes, I didn't yes. want to be broke again. I didn't want to, mm. you know, I, I need to have my medicine for my mother. That's how it all started. I just yeah. need to, if I, Lord, just my prayer was, Lord, just let me, let me make enough money to take care of her. Mm -hmm. And I had millions and it still wasn't enough in my mind. So all I was right. still going really, really, really hard yeah. until she died. When she died, I, I, it had to reset me. Mm -hmm. Like everything I was pushing for was gone. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. But, but those, those times were so, such a blur because mm -hmm. I just worked all the way through. Yeah. Do you have any regrets? I, sometimes I do because I, I look, I feel like I'm 12 years younger mm -hmm. because I went into this silo of working yeah. and I came out 12 years later of like, okay, oh wait, this is what the world is. This is what, wait, people... Well, they were enjoying themselves were at talking. these mm -hmm. parties and Oscars and award shows. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, you know how I would walk in. In it and was, out. I was like, I'm not enjoying, nope, nope, this is work. Back I'm, to work. Okay, yeah, we're good. Back to work. Literally. So I feel like I missed 12 years of my life. Mm -hmm. Even though I, now I look back at and some wonderful things mm -hmm. happened. I'm telling you, I missed them all. Mm -hmm. Like I'll see photos or somebody remind me. So you remember when I go... You're right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. But but instead of being 53, I'm 41. There you go. So, hey, we were saying okay. There you go. There, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, what does a billionaire like you who has a busy schedule, what do you do for yourself? Like how when do you you know a lot of people say, like, I take this is my me time, this is what mm. I do. What do you do for fun? What do you do to like take care of Tyler, of your body? I know you work out, I know yeah. you like to travel, but like what are things that you do? Because a lot of people are like you're working all the time. When do you have time for just you? I you know what? People think that I'm a lot busier than I am, but be, but because we work so fast mm -hmm. and because I build in breaks. I don't try to kill myself like right. like I what I would have back then, mm -hmm. but now no I I build in I'm gonna work three months really really hard nonstop I'm gonna exhaust myself and then I'm gonna take two months off mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to my place in Wyoming or Colorado I'm gonna walk mm -hmm. through the woods and be in nature I'm gonna talk to God I'm gonna go down to the island I'm gonna cry I'm gonna pray I'm gonna mm -hmm. lick my wounds to see who 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 stayed who didn't what what where where am I hurt am I okay am I feeling loved mm -hmm. am I feeling supported. Mm -hmm. I check in with myself. Yeah. I talk to God about it. It's so important. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Yeah. But the biggest thing that I do, because I can do it every day that I'm working, is mm -hmm. just build airplanes, build model airplanes. Yes. Oh yeah. my goodness. Me and my me, me and my son will sit there and just he's loving it. We're Aww. you know it just the it's the simplest thing. Mm -hmm. But to build something that will be able to fly, yeah. I feel like I'm teaching my son how to literally fly. Wow. So so those moments are really oh, beautiful. That's, yeah, that's yeah. so beautiful. I love and that. And this kid, you see, you know he's yes, amazing. He amazing. is amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I can't wait to see where he goes yeah, and the, yeah. what he decides to do with his life. It's going to be amazing. To yeah. What, and, I, and, you know, whatever it is, yeah. you, I just want him to be the best at it mm -hmm. and be happy. I love that. Yeah. Just be happy, that. son. Yeah. Yes. Because right now it's a race car driver, astronaut, and a track and field runner, <laughs> and a comedian. <laughs> So I we, love it. we had a business meeting in my office uh, a few weeks ago and I was asking him, uh, you know, I, he was in the room and I was having all these meetings oh, okay. and then he comes, okay, Papa's my turn to meet. Okay, Aww. great. Have a seat. What do you want to talk about? I want to talk about my life and my career and what I'm going to do. It's like, okay, eight years old. You okay, better, man. I love it. Yeah. So I recorded it and I can't wait to show him when he's older. Like, yes. this is what you wanted to talk about that day. That is yeah. amazing. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah. When you are... Um, dealing with things mental health is really big yeah. like a, a black community mm. is like really honing in on it and mm. understanding it more we're more open to therapy who does someone like tyler perry talk to do you have someone that you can like say hey this is what i'm going through jesus yeah <laughs> jesus. no yeah no oprah td jakes you know i have i have 
re Michelle Obama, I have mm -hmm. really good people who have been through some things. I mm -hmm. used to talk to Cicely Tyson, you know, oh. about things, wow. just that level of history and mm -hmm. lessons that she's learned. And mm -hmm. Sidney Poitier, I, I went to the masters. Yes. I, I was flying to, to Africa and I invited both of them to fly with me. So mm -hmm. I literally sat at their feet listening to their mm -hmm. stories. To, you know, Clarence Avant died um, yes. a couple of days ago and yeah. he just was, he was the black guy. He right? was, absolutely. And anytime you needed anything or something put together, this or presidents or mm -hmm. that he was the man. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. I, you know, I had a chance to spend time with him. Oh, that, that's just Kate Quincy Jones. These guys, mm -hmm. Harry Belafonte on the phone with them. Yes. That's, that's what I mean. That yeah. those those are the people. But all our legends are getting out of here. They are, yeah. So so I'm hoping that, you know, more of us will be open to sharing. Mm -hmm. You know, when I talk to Jay Jay Z, he he is one of those people mm -hmm. who's like, listen, I got the information. Come yeah. get it. Yeah. You know. So yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. But as far as mental health goes, I tell you the main problem. That's mm -hmm. how I, I, you, you look at the tobacco crisis mm -hmm. when everybody was talking about how uh, cigarettes were in the beginning, they were safe, and, but the people made billions of dollars mm -hmm. on it. Then you look at um, all the other opioid crisis, yeah. crack cocaine, mm -hmm. right? There's another crisis that is happening that is affecting people's mental health in ways that nobody's talking about. And I'm hoping one day that it comes crashing down like the tobacco industry, like the, like the, um, uh, uh, okay. opioid addiction mm -hmm. in industry, Purdue Pharma, and that is social media. I knew you were going to say that. Oh my gosh, you are you, right. You, if you don't believe me, try to try to turn it off and put it down. Mm -hmm. I pick up my phone randomly, like right. I'll be ha doing something then before I know it, I'm just scrolling on Instagram. It's like a drug. Yes, and <laughs> you're being fed mm -hmm. whatever whatever algorithm you chose mm -hmm. because it's attached to where you go where you they are tracking everything yes. you're doing mm -hmm. and whatever mood you in mm -hmm. you're in mm -hmm. that's what it's going to enhance yeah so if you're a person who's already struggling and sad and depressed and dealing with some things it's going to be really really tough to to come up higher when you're constantly being fed things that make you sad and depressed yeah. i'm not talking about clinical depression i'm talking yeah. about people who are sad and depressed yeah yeah no i used to um I went through a phase where I had body dysmorphia mm. because I would look on Instagram and I would see all these perfect bodies, whether it was plastic surgery bodies or just everything is perfect. Everybody's just showing the highlight reel. Yeah. That's all you're seeing. You're never seeing the down times. And I would try to be more transparent with that because people just think our life is so perfect. And I'm like, no, it's not. And, like, and listen, I know a lot of those folks and I'd be like, this your life for real? Because that ain't what you really going through. I, I, <laughs> So it's just like, yes. stop with the madness. Stop with the madness yeah. of trying to give this perfect image that everything's perfect because there are people who are really struggling, who are really looking to to these images and yeah. thinking, this is how my life should be. Yeah. Now, if it's aspirational, great. But if mm -hmm. it's something that you know damn well, you got 38 filters on, 2,000 mm -hmm. retouches, and 48 <laughs> something else to make sure it looks great. Come on. That's I not... was that girl. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I'll be like, yeah. let me go ahead and look nip tuck yeah, right nip here. Nip tuck, <laughs> digital Botox, nip right. tuck. Yeah. yeah. All the things. I worry about it for my son who's not on it, who doesn't see it. Good. He doesn't, he, you know, I, he reads books. Yeah. So I don't want him to be so uh, unaware of it, mm -hmm. but I want him to know who he is before the world starts to try to tell him who he is. Oh. So. That's yeah. so good. Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. it. So when we talk about um, God and aligning your vision with God, how do you create the space for God to really like talk to you and say, hey, I know you said sometimes things get shaken up when, when you start, try to go against what God is saying, maybe because you see something totally different. Because your vision's not aligned. Yeah. And I've learned to surrender to God's vision. Mm -hmm. I don't try to align, have him align to my vision. Mm -hmm. I let the op opposite happen. I'm like, okay, yeah. where are we going? Yeah. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. And I, I've learned so much, God, to trust you that this is the way I'm going to go. Because mm. I don't want the resistance and the fighting or the other stuff. It's just to surrender to it. But again, I keep going back to social media because it is so hard to hear from God in noise. And if you are the type of person that is seeking advice from every friend you have mm -hmm. online, every Instagram, every TikTok, if you're seeking advice, mm. how can you know the still small voice that I believe is God? Yeah. That's why I have to remove myself 
and not be on anything digital and mm -hmm. just listen to see what I hear. Walking in nature is the best way. I was I was out in Colorado and um, the wind just whispered past. I, I heard it. I thought it was traffic coming because mm -hmm. we were up on this mountain. Yeah. I thought it was traffic. And I asked the guy, was with me, is that the traffic? He said, no, that's the wind. It's coming. And I heard it's it come what? down over the mountain, down through the valley, and come up over it. And 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 for me, that's like I, how I think God will speak. Like mm -hmm. there'll be over there just this little bit of something yeah. that you that you missed. Wow. And then there's another something. Okay, you missed you missed the acorn, so now mm -hmm. the branch has to fall. Yeah. Okay, you missed the branch. Now the tree's got to fall on you. Oh. Okay, you still missed that. The whole forest is burning. Jesus. So I've learned to just mm. when I see the acorn, I'm gonna be like, oh no 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 no, let mm. me get let me get that because I don't want the tree or the forest. Yeah, right. Like, just give me the acorn. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good because yeah. yeah, the whole forest be burning around me because yeah. yeah. I. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -mm. I'm like, no, I see it this way. Yeah. Like, and I, I need to get better at surrendering. I always ask for God to order my steps, but I still am very much like, okay, this is the way I see it. I'm just going to go this way until God is like, girl, get back my, here. Yeah, God, God in the Bible says, my thoughts of you are pure mm -hmm. and of a good report and mm -hmm. that you be in, in, in health and prosper as your soul prospers, yes. right? So so all of that's good, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if if your vision isn't aligned with what's good, then I don't know how that can be God. Right. That's so good. And what's good for you may not be the thing that you're supposed to do at the time. And that's normally what I be doing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I always do things that um that, that I yeah. that don't need to be doing. And God's like, girl, I know we've been through this before. Why are you still doing the same thing? But let me tell you something. I, I really didn't understand the love of God until I had a child. Wow. And if God loves us more than I love my child, then mm -hmm. I can't even wrap my brain around that because this, and he does, mm -hmm. because this, the, when I see him making a mistake or when I see him going the wrong, doing something wrong, I'm like, okay, how do I correct him? Mm -hmm. How do I get him on the straight and narrow? And I'm going to choose the level of correction based on how hard he's going at it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. So we talk about you having vision as a little boy. Mm -hmm. So as an adult, what do you once you have that vision? How did how do you decide? Okay, God, I'm going to partner with you to bring this to life. Is it through prayer, through meditation, or just always keeping him involved? It's his vision. Mm -hmm. mm. So so you you riding along? He gave it to you. Yeah, yeah. you you ain't you ain't in partnership. It's his vision for mm -hmm. your life. Wow. So it's it's. It's surrendering to where is this taking me? That's the thing. Like, mm -hmm. where is this taking me? And how? that's why I'm saying the most frustrating part of my early life was mm -hmm. having all these visions and not seeing the path. Yeah. So I could have did a million plays and never saw anybody ever saw them. Never. God had to line all of that up mm. for it to start to work. Wow. And I had to be willing to get in the middle of it and go hard. Mm -hmm. That's why I missed those 12 years yeah. because I just, I was in the will. In the will. You were in, in the it flow. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I still, saw it. yeah. Still, yeah. You still, are, yeah. But I'm enjoying my life a lot more now. I'm enjoying the mo I'm taking the moments now. Yeah. I was just at an age where, you know, I'm just running hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love you in this phase of your life. Yeah, I'm see, good. Yeah, I'm, yeah, happy and enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, wearing nice clothes, going to concerts, you know and all this stuff. And got some bling bling on. <laughs> got a little richie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Things I never bought before. Like, yeah. Mm, yep, no. But you, nope. you can, you yep, know? Yep. Had my zoot suits, my Steve Harvey suits back in the day. I was clean. <laughs> they had my rabbit jacket. First, yeah. mm. <laughs> they you told me it was a mink, but it was a rabbit when I bought it at Greenbrier. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Never bought it at Greenbrier. <laughs> I sure did. I wanted that store still there. I need to go by that store just to it see. It probably mm. is. Yep. That is hilarious. Well, Tyler, thank you so much. I appreciate this is, it. No, I appreciate you. I am beyond proud of you, my love. Thank you so much. So proud of you. Thank you. Looking at you. <laughs> come through all of this and I was right there with you to the see it. The whole time, yep. yes, thank you. To see you. it, look at you. It's crazy. And I, I, when you wake up in here, you're like, When I open life. those doors and walk in here, I'm like, wow. This is my life. This is my life, yeah. 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 And it feels so good. Yeah, God bless <laughs> feels, you. Thank so you. so proud so, of you, baby. Thank so you. proud of you. Thank you, so. I appreciate you coming today. At the close of the show, we do what is called Positive Outcomes, mm -hmm. where um, our viewers actually write in to us, okay. and we're going to give them some advice. Okay. So our listener letter today says, Hi, Crystal. Thank you for taking the time to help me. Lately, I've been feeling like I'm stuck. It's like I'm being pushed to bigger and greater things, but I feel like I'm getting in my own way. Mm -hmm. My fear and insecurity keeps holding me back. 
And I feel myself battle with the fear of others saying, who does she think she is by fully stepping into whatever it greater is. The best way I can describe it is that feeling when I'm on a boat and God has called me to the water, but my fear of drowning is greater than my faith that God will help me float. So I'm just standing at the edge of the boat, not jumping. How can I get myself to jump? Go back and read again. Mm -hmm. read, read again. Okay. Okay. Hi, Crystal. Thank you for taking the time to help me. Lately, I've been feeling like I am stuck. It's like I'm being... Problem number one. Ooh. I have been feeling like I am stuck. Mm -hmm. She's speaking that I have been feeling like I am stuck. So you, you speak things into existence, power of life and death in the tongue. Mm -hmm. I have been feeling like I am stuck rather than I am not stuck. God is going to make a way. I am not stuck. Go wow. on. What's the okay. something else she said? Uh -huh. it's, um, she says, it's like I'm being pushed to bigger and greater things, but I feel like I'm getting in my own way. It's like I'm being pushed. No, I am being pushed oh. to bigger and greater things, mm. but I am getting in my wow. way. And understanding your own words here, yes. here when you, baby, you, you're giving the answers to yourself. Mm -hmm. I am getting in my own way. Well, why? What is your motivation? Mm -hmm. Why are you getting in your own way? What did mama say? What did daddy say? What did they say at school? What did, little, what did the little girl and you deal with that makes you get into the way of the successful woman that's trying to figure it all out? So you've got to go back and undo some of those voices. Mm -hmm. And every time you hear something negative, when I was coming through all this stuff, every time I would hear something negative, I'd be like, nope, I'm not letting it in because I believe I can do this. God mm -hmm. said I can do this. This is going to be okay. It's all going to work out yeah. every time. Mm -hmm. Don't let negative voices in your head become your reality yeah. because they will. Mm -hmm. They will. That is so true. Yeah. She is. And then she said, my fear and insecurity keeps holding me back. I feel myself battle with the fear of other people saying, who does she think she is by my, fully stepping into that? My fear and it is holding my fear is holding me back. It's, here's something you have to understand about fear. Mm -hmm. Fear and excitement can mimic the same emotions in you. Wow. So mm. you can be excited, mm -hmm. but you think you're afraid. Yes. So wow. you have to be clear about what you're identifying, right? That's good. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. good. Wow, you helping me. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. And it says, um, the best way I can describe it is that I feel like I'm on a boat and God has called mm -hmm. me to the water, but my fear, here goes fear again, mm -hmm. of drowning is greater than my faith that God will help me float. Yep, where did it come from? And let me tell you something, fear is good. A healthy a healthy dose of fear mm -hmm. is good to have because yeah. it keeps you grounded, it keeps you humble, and it keeps you praying. Mm -hmm. I, I never would have gotten to this place if I hadn't been afraid. Yes. I, Every major decision was like, oh, what if this doesn't work out? Like, mm -hmm. nope, get that out of your head mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you cannot be afraid. Yeah. Because, and that, and as I, the more, and I say this to her, the more successes she has, even if she looks back in her over her life, mm -hmm. nine times out of ten when I ask people this, they, it blows their mind. I look back, on, look back at your entire life mm -hmm. and tell me how many times God has let you down. Mm. Her entire life. Yeah. And if you really mm. think about that, your future days, you go, okay. Yeah. Even when I thought he let wow. me down, even when I thought I had failed, even when I thought I had messed up, that was good for me Oof. so that I could be in this position. Yes. Yeah. Oh I learned so gosh. much in the things that God didn't let me do. Mm -hmm. And when a, when a door, door is closed, that is not a no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is, there's another way. Mm -hmm. That's another path. It's like being in a maze. When you hit that, that, brick wall mm -hmm. you don't you don't stop no. you, you could okay maybe I got to double back I got to yeah. go this way I got to go this way mm -hmm. but you'll get there yes yeah wow that's so good and her last question is how do I get myself to jump hmm. how do I get myself to jump mm -hmm. yeah by undoing all of those voices that cause you to have those fears yes yeah that's good yeah wow well y'all heard it from the the man himself <laughs> like I ain't got nothing else to add to that that was yeah. good you broke that all the way down <laughs> Wow, thank that blessed me. My mm. goodness. I don't even want to look at Denora because I know she's probably crying. I'm scared to look at her. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so the next thing we do is what I'm going through. I like that outfit. Who, who bought you the outfit? You did. Anyway, anyway, go ahead. What are you saying? What are you saying? <laughs> darling, this came from um, the Dolce & Gabbana store in mm. Portofino, uh, darling. Was it Portofino or was Portofino. it Capri, darling? It was somewhere we were, darling. It was da so, so darling, long ago to remember. I, I had a rough night at sea and I was... <laughs> I couldn't get out to shop, and my dear friend Tyler Perry was That was like, a rough night. I got see. you. <laughs> yeah, rough night. Send us to make sure, make sure feel better. I did? Yeah. Immediately, yes. I was like, yeah. oh, 
I, I think I can get up now. <laughs> <laughs> and then a black car to make a girl get out the bed. She like baby, flew, flew real quick. and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Out of me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So we um, also do what is called what I'm going through and what I'm growing through. Mm. And in this season of my life, um, even based on things we've talked about, I am going through, especially right now we're on a strike, just um, stretching my faith, Mm -hmm. um, learning new things that I want to do and not putting all my eggs in one basket Mm -hmm. and just having faith that God is going to move. Is that going through or growing through? This is what I'm going through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right now. But then okay. I'm growing. Yeah. Then I'm growing through. Um, right now, I'm really growing through. And I, I feel like this is something I'm always growing through, not like con- having control of everything mm-hmm. and allowing things mm-hmm. to just be. Mm-hmm. So that'd be what I'm just letting go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you? Are you going through? What, I'm, what I go through mm-hmm. is, is just battling compassion fatigue, as we, talk, as we talked yes. about before, mm-hmm. and understanding that, that, Everybody's not going to get it. Yeah. And being okay with that. I still have to remind myself mm. of that. That's what I'm growing through, mm-hmm. or I would say. Yeah. Uh, going through, I'm actually pretty good. You are, baby. You good. I'm, you I'm, good. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really good right now. I, yeah. I've, I've lived these 53 years and learned a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And, and all I want to do at this point is just take this wisdom, mm-hmm. these things that I've learned, yes. and share them with anybody who wants to mm-hmm. receive them, take yes. them. But I also don't want to, oh my God, the older you get, I, I see some old people who just, that they are just impatient. The older <laughs> you get, it's like, listen, I've, I have one friend I've been help, trying to help for years. I was like, we've been over this. Mm-hmm. I've told you these things 10 different times because I never say, you should do this. Mm. I, I, and when I'm giving advice, yeah, I, most don't. times I let people talk so mm-hmm. they can hear themselves work out the issues. Mm-hmm. But other times I'll, I'll say, well, if I were in your shoes, mm-hmm. if I were, here is my thinking on that. Yeah. But after sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing and you still don't start making progress in that direction mm-hmm. like you're wasting my time because there's somebody else who could be using this and time. who will listen and will figure listen, it out yeah. Yeah. yeah take those yeah. nuggets you're giving and apply it that's yeah. so true and anybody who can get to me what i mean by that is like anybody who can get in my presence like mm-hmm. i'm i'm I, I say this in the best way no i know exactly yeah. what you mean yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm Tyler Perry, you mm-hmm. know, and I'm, I'm a loner by nature. I like to be alone. And so when people make their way into my life, I go, oh, mm-hmm. you are clearly somebody God has sent for me yes. to pay attention to because mm. you broke through all of that stuff and you're this close. So like, okay, what am I supposed to teach you, God? Mm-hmm. Not, you can't be selfish. Yeah. can't be about you. Wow. No matter how tired, exhausted, here's a moment. Mm-hmm. And because that moment may be something that saves or changes that person's life yeah i'm a witness amen. i'm amen. a testimony i'm a testimony a living proof example yeah. Yeah. okay and the last thing we do is keep it blank sweetie because the show is called keep it positive mm-hmm. sweetie but we fill in the blank and um i would say keep it open-minded sweetie mm. because opening your mind to mm. new things can like get you further mm. I think we would say the same thing. I said, keep it growing. There we go. Keep it growing. I Just keep it. it growing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here we keep, go keep again. It, keep it, here, here we grow again. <laughs> here we grow again. This is great. I love it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. If you want to be featured on our Positive Outcomes listener letter, please write in to keepitpositivesweetie at gmail.com. You can follow me on all platforms at L-U-V Crystal Renee. And then you can also follow Kips on all platforms at Keep It Positive Sweetie. And you guys can follow Tyler at, at Tyler Perry because He's so any anytime somebody is is being some negative and you don't want them to know what you're saying or they're being all that way, you just say Kips. And keep Kips, walking. Kips, 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 baby. Kips t-shirts. Oh, it's coming. Merch. Kips. Merch. Merch. <laughs> merch. Kips. The merch is coming. Yep. Yes. Thank you, T. My pleasure. I love you, man. I love you too, man. <laughs>